Hi, welcome back to the Enjoy Me channel. In the previous video, we took a look at the comparison between the HomePod Mini and the Google Nest Mini. As the Internet of Things is permeating more and more into our everyday lives, we would like to take a look at some of the tendencies that are happening and take a look into the future from these tendencies. Including myself, a lot of people jump into the world of Internet of Things, abbreviated IoT, via smart speakers. In case any viewer is not familiar with the concept, smart speakers go beyond just playing music and podcasts and act as an input device collaborating with your phone, taking your commands and running functions such as turning on and off the lights, operating the thermometer and such, and functioning as the hub of the home IoT environment. If you have a routine at certain times of the day, such as you wake up in the morning, you turn on the lights and listen to the news while drinking a cup of coffee, it does a great job of automating these things. In my case, I'm using smart lights that turn on at a predetermined time in the morning. They go out when I leave the home based on the GPS information of my phone and turn back on when I return after work. I also own a Chromecast to continue the media from my phone to my TV. I personally enjoy using these technologies, optimizing aspects of my life, but my personal opinion is that it is a bit early to argue that using such smart functions are actually beneficial to our lives today. The appliances that are available on Google Store as of early February 2021 are smart speakers, Chromecast, which turns your TV into a smart TV, doorbells combined with a camera, front door smart locks, smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, home security alarm, security cameras, thermostats, etc. While it is certain that these products will provide some convenience, it's difficult to say that most people will think it's reasonable to spend over $1,000 for such small improvements to our daily lives. Today, companies are fighting for the position to provide the hub of the smart home to the customers. The leaders in this industry are Amazon and Google. According to Statisha, Amazon has been the sole player in the smart speaker market up until 2016. From then until the fourth quarter of 2017, Google and Amazon had the majority of the market. And from the first quarter of 2018, Apple and Chinese companies like Alibaba and Xiaomi have joined the competition. In the latest data of 2019 fourth quarter, Amazon remains the top seller with 28.3% of sales, followed by 24.9% of Google. Apple took up 47 of total sales. One thing to note in this chart is that the sales figures and actual number of users are different things. In the latest period, Amazon and Google showed similar numbers in sales, but considering the history of making more sales in the past, the cumulative number of users for the Amazon Echo far outweighs the number for Google Nest. The actual share of the market that Apple holds is likely to be far lower than 4.7%. There are a few points of fierce competition where the companies try to provide a better experience when it comes to smart home hubs. To list them, they are how fast the hub reacts to commands, how many appliances it can communicate with, and how complex the communication and interaction is. Let's go over them one by one and take a look into the future of IoT. Simply put, perhaps the reason why most people now don't yet bother to adopt a smart home may be in the reaction speed to the commands we give. Currently, the most common input methods are voice commands to the smart speaker and using the app or widget in your phone or tablet. This process takes a lot more time than just flicking a switch. Unless you're giving a series of commands, such as when I'm up in the morning, turn on the lights, set the thermostats to whatever temperature, resume the podcast I was listening to after reading the news, and brew me a cup of coffee. When carrying out a single command, the remote controls and switches we've been using for the last century is a much faster solution. Let's quickly take a look at the process of Google Nest turning on our lights. First, we wake the smart speaker up and give the command to turn on the lights. The command travels through the internet pipes and is translated into computer language in the Google Cloud server. In my case, using IKEA Tradfree, which is in partnership with Google, the Google Net Speaker, serving as the hub of my smart home, sends the command to the Tradfree hub. The hub relays the command to the light bulbs, which is finally turned on. For such a simple command, such a complex process is required and results in a long delay from command to delivery. Of course, the firms developing smart homes are aware of this issue and trying to find a solution. According to 9to5Google, in the case of Google, through the program Local Home SDK, Google is collaborating with appliance manufacturers such as Philips, Wemo, TP-Link to send commands directly from the hub to the end products without utilization of the cloud. In the case of Apple, the speakers include much stronger processors than its competition, ones that are used in Apple Watches or iPhones. 
Apple claims that it is used to evaluate the environment for best sound quality, but there are speculations that it is for deep learning the patterns of the owner's commands to minimize the reaction time. Transition to 5G is also a big factor that will come into play for efficient communication between us and the smart environment. Compared to evolution from 1G to 4G, which has been primarily of data volume and speed, the development principle of 5G includes standardization of communication that will maximize speed between peripheral devices, so the need for intervention of the cloud is minimized. Standardization of communication like the examples mentioned, and each smart device becoming smarter will combine into advances in the technology in general, and will present itself to us in the form of products in the near future. A truly smart environment cannot be achieved only by faster internet. A smarter algorithm optimized for devices around us to provide maximum utility should be developed as well. An example was documented by ZDNet, which was a self-driving car experiment conducted between the auto company Hyundai Motors and the communication provider KT of South Korea. Using 5G communication, real-time traffic information was shared between the server and three cars. In the experiment, the cars were running on the same road in the same direction. When suddenly the first car had to brake abruptly due to a bicycle that appeared on the road, the car behind received information gained from the sensors of the first car and was able to make the decision to decelerate more gently, and the car furthest behind, combining all of this information, was able to change lanes in advance without the need to slow down. This experiment is an example that with smart enough peripheral devices and a core server that is able to handle information and make complex decisions, a sophisticated algorithm can take place and make things in our lives smoother. Like the cars in the example, we need smarter and more smart devices for a richer smart environment. Currently in the market, there are products such as a doorbell with a camera attached, a garage door opener with a camera attached, a kitchen faucet, a shower head with a Bluetooth speaker, a refrigerator, an oven, a washer dryer, lights, etc. And individual developers are creating devices for their own needs, such as a self-watering pot which also regulates nutrition and pH, or a call switch for the pets to call the owner. A lot of these ideas are eye-catching, but frankly they are not yet truly attractive and innovative for us to spend our money on. But looking back at the history of smartphones, combinations of functions have brought innovative apps such as GPS and compass resulting in navigated driving or gyroscope and camera resulting in a leveler. With so many new devices and functions and imagination of developers, many innovative products are soon to come. As it is easy to find photos from 10 days ago, but it's not easy to remember what we had for lunch 10 days ago, we are already relying most of our information in the cloud. In the near future, that will extend to our physical environment. Let us give our version of how we imagine the future. A classic example of the algorithm utilizing our preference data is suggested products on Amazon. The online shopping world is the field where utilization of such data is actively implemented. But shopping in the physical world does not involve any tailoring of the experience. We visit the mall and walk through the spaces which were not designed for me, walk by the shops which were placed not by my preference, and browse through the products which are not organized with my preference in mind. Would there be any way for real-life physical shopping to also implement the preference data that my internet shopping tendencies have created? Perhaps shopping malls in the future can be a conveyor belt we can step on and wait while shops and products can be placed in front of us by our shopping history. Companies providing the hub of this smart environment, such as Amazon and Google, are fiercely competing for partnership with more developers of peripheral products. For example, if a product is only compatible with Amazon Alexa, it can become a reason to take customers trying to build a smart environment away from Google. To provide better service as a hub of the smart environment to as many people as possible, these companies need as much pattern and input data from as many people as possible. They are fighting for more ground in the smart environment ecosystem soon to come. Unless we see some big newcomers to this market besides Amazon and Google, we may have to select a smart environment service just like we select our phone carriers now. This may seem out of nowhere, but what is the relationship between state and individual? In the past, where nationalist education was the norm, the state was a figure of unquestioned authority. But today, if the individual can find an environment where their skills and abilities can find better use, it is becoming easier and easier to acquire visas or residencies and emigrate to from their original state. States are also competing for better human resources. A familiar example can come from sports, like Russia recruiting the American WNBA star Becky Hammond. 
Looking into the statistics, a lot of governments are trying to provide better quality of life or work environments to prevent brain drain to countries such as the US. Lower scores indicate more brain drain to foreign countries in this graph. It shows that Ireland and India have defended brain drain successfully between the year 92 and 02. Nationality or affiliations are becoming less and less binding today. The relationship between the state and individual, which once seemed concrete, is dissolving, and what the two provide to each other are becoming more important. The four duties of the citizens of the Republic of Korea are A, the duty of education, B, the duty of defense, C, the duty of labor, and D, the duty of paying taxes. The state provides rights, welfare, infrastructure, etc. in return. To radically simplify, defense, labor, and taxes end up being time and money, and welfare and infrastructure from the state basically are services. Then how is the relationship between companies providing service and the customers? The customer agrees to the terms to provide information and pay money, and the companies provide service. The relationship is much more intuitive than the abstract relationship between citizen and state, and takes up much more of our time. In our day, we go to work or school, checking Instagram with our iPhones, spend the day using Microsoft tools, and come back home to shop a little bit on Amazon and watch Netflix or YouTube before going to bed. Even the weekend, time we head out and spend time in the physical environment is likely to be soon intervened by these firms. Looking at the competition between these companies for more control and occupation of our time and attention, it looks likely that the customers will divide into groups following the services and products they prefer, much like the division between Android and Apple right now. For this channel to make a rather cavalier prediction into the future, we see perhaps a shift in the idea of allegiance itself from nationality to corporations. Of course there are differences between citizens of a state and customers to a company. The citizens have a right to vote and politicians voted into office represent the will of the people and legislate laws and policies to decide the path where the community will go. For corporations, of course the needs of the customers are something they carefully listen to, but the customers are not given with any decision directly affecting the policies or future of the company. To extend the metaphor of statecraft to corporation-customer relationship, customers are closer to immigrant foreign workers who are necessary and are a resource competed over between the states, but are not given political rights. The equivalent to citizens who have political rights and will directly affect how the companies perform are stakeholders. The corporation is a very unique country with very few citizens and very many foreign immigrant workers. If we can take a look into such a society, perhaps they can give us a hint into what the future can look like. Such a place exists today. The proportion of its citizens within its population is only 12% in the United Arab Emirates. The foreigner population, consisting 88% of the population, not only work in manual labor or services, which are more typical occupations taken by foreign labor in other countries, but also high education labor such as medicine, law or research, which normally are jobs occupied by locals. Having a reliable source of wealth, UAE is able to attract lots of labor from abroad with low tax rates and high quality of life. 99% of the citizens working in UAE occupy jobs in public jobs such as government administration, education, military, or managing state-owned companies. They enjoy more comprehensive welfare than the foreign labor, enjoying a status of virtual aristocracy. I should really start buying Amazon and Google stocks. The viewers of this channel at the point of early 2021 have likely experienced the spread of internet through the 90s and 2000s, the emergence of the smartphone in the 2010s, and the process of IT companies gathering and utilizing our personal information to customize their services towards us. I myself was in school in the first decade of the 2000s, and I remember learning the phrase ubiquitous computing that will be common in our future environment. In the era of the 90s when the textbooks were written, it may have been a reasonable guess, but the smartphone has delayed that from happening. We do see the ETA of the next train in the station, or a digital map in the shopping mall, but most of what was guessed to be in ubiquitous devices actually appeared in the form of apps on our smartphones linked with our personal information. In the scale of history, this point of 2021 is likely to be remembered as the early era of IoT. The time we can manipulate our physical environment using our online accounts will soon come, and we gave you our look on the social impact it may have from this channel's point of view. We would love to see some of your comments or other possible impacts it may have on our future. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe to help us in continuing our story. For those of you who have already subscribed, we would like to tell you that it really does help. Thank you.